Uh, Jerry, hopefully you've strapped yourself uh, into the, your seat. So what about this sell-off? As you mentioned, a good dose of reality here. Well, it, this, was a, this was a very tough day. I think uh, reality is the right way to look at it, that the markets listened to uh, what the Federal Reserve had to say yesterday and recognize that there's a limit to what policy can do to revive the economy at this point. Uh, we were more troubled, as, as you said a minute ago, Susan, by those, uh, those import numbers that are going to shave a little bit more off our estimates for second quarter GDP growth. So we're, uh, the, I think the, the slow growth we're coming to understand is something we're going to have to live with for some time here in the U.S. Okay, so what does this mean for the markets then, Jerry? Is the uh, summer rally over at this point? Oh, you know, it's hard really to know what, to, to be able to talk about what's going to happen in the next few weeks. I mean, there's an on the one hand, on the other hand, as we economists always like to portray, if you look at second quarter earnings and you think that they're sustainable at this level, then the U.S. overall indices, the S&P, is, is, is undervalued at this point. And the technicians tell us we're near some, some pretty tough support levels. Uh, but I think what we're looking at long term is, and Bernanke used this word in his congressional testimony a couple weeks ago, the big word right now is uncertainty. So we're going to be taking for some time a, 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 a haircut. We're going to be cutting the premia that we uh, are willing to pay for stocks and other risky assets for some time to come because we're uncertain, not even because we're necessarily pessimistic, but because we just don't know what to expect next. We're not ready to take risk. Okay, Jerry, you said Oppenheimer Funds is going to uh, back off a bit here. What does that mean? Are you going to get into Treasury, some safe assets, oh. or getting into cash? Susan, I didn't say that the Oppenheimer Funds is good. I mean, when I said we, I kind of meant we in the, in the U.S. markets. Oppenheimer Funds, because we operate, you know, we have s several, di many different funds with different mandates. We stick to those mandates. Um, and mm -hmm. we are always very bottoms up. No matter what the environment is, we can find investments around the world that we think will provide a good risk return for our, for our investors. So we're not really backing off from the, the specific mandates we have in our various accounts. Okay, so what does that mean then? What, how do you invest in this environment then, Jerry? With great caution is how you invest, or <laughs> with late, great, I think the word is selectivity, not caution. We're looking around the world for companies that can, can benefit from where growth is really occurring, and of course that means in the emerging markets, where there are demographic winds at our back. You know, that means in Europe, for example, we're looking for companies that can benefit from, it, from an aging population. We're looking on the debt side internationally and especially at emerging markets and at some countries that have their fiscal house a little better in order than the U.S. has, whose debt situation is better than we're seeing um, in the U.S. or even in Western Europe or Japan, looking for those kind of, of opportunities for both uh, to both take some, some interest rate risk and some currency risk as well on behalf of our clients. Okay, well, speaking of emerging markets, Jerry, I mean, there are some concerns right now over China. That factored into the sell-off as well, especially when you look at industrial production slowing up, indicating that maybe Chinese factories aren't churning out as much as they used to. Well, you know, I'm really puzzled by this because, you know, a couple of months ago, we were worried that Chinese industrial production and GDP growth was pushing the limits of what that, of the capacity of even that economy. We were talking about 12 percent annualized GDP growth and soaring industrial production. We, we applauded the government's efforts to, to rein in uh, growth to something that was reasonable. And now we got what we wished for and we're complaining about it. Looks to me as though Chinese industrial production is stabilizing at a level that's consistent with the kind of growth that economy can, can tolerate. And that's having calming, I wouldn't call it downward, but I'd call it calming mm -hmm. spillover effects in China's major trading partners. So I, I think the market is looking for things to some extent to get nervous about. But to me, it looks like Chinese production is stabilizing in an area that, that is in a, in, a, in a growth rate that's probably sustainable. Okay, Jerry, nice talking to you. Thanks for sharing your time.